This week in PlayStation, we're talking about if Rocksteady can fix Suicide Squad, Discord coming to PlayStation 5, and our review of Before Your Eyes on PlayStation VR 2. We'll have all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. Welcome to the show, everybody. That's Blessing. That's Janet. I'm Greg, and you can get this show on Patreon.com slash KindOfFunny. Over there, you can watch us record it live, usually, get it ad-free, and get dozens of monthly episodes of exclusive content only on Patreon.com slash KindOfFunny. If you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. Support us on the Epic Game Store, Fortnite, Rocket League, and everywhere else you can use the creator code KindOfFunny. You can get PSI Love You XOXO for free with ads and without any kind of exclusive bonus content like you'd get on patreon.com slash kind of funny on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe thank you to our patreon producers tripod plus plus delaney twining today we're brought to you by shady rays and honey but let's start with a psn message from you hello jenna hello blessing hello hello jenna you're wearing the hat what does that mean it means that I've been playing PSVR 2, baby, and I got the mark <laughs> of the mark of the VR to the show for The mark of it. the VR remains. So you wear the hat. I love it. I love it a lot. In case people have been, well, obviously no one's watching this now because it's, it's embargo and goes up later. But if you're going for the full like through line of our content, you know I already talked about this on KFGD because I had the same mark. I know you're thinking, wow, does the mark last like six hours? No, I played VR, did KFGD, played more VR. No came good. here so i've just been going back and forth from leaving different indentations the screen and now to screen. it looks at me yeah. that'll be the the true benchmark for the success of playstation vr2 to see if by the you know what i don't even know by 2033 if janet just has a permanent line in her head from the vr unit exactly PSN messages usually come from the audience of course you can write in to be part of the show for free at kind of funny.com slash p s i l y blessing who wrote in this week uh, who wrote in this week? Kebabs did. Actually, Blessing, no. That was all a fake out. Janet, take it away. All right. So on episode 111 of PS I Love You XOXO, which aired March 14th last year, I asked Blessing at Yoye Jr., is Elden Ring better than GTA 5 Online? He said, get back to me in a year. And I know what he's going to say. Technically, it hasn't been a year yet because it's the 9th and the 14th. Come on. I ran this by Greg. He said it's fine. Split the difference. It's close to, you know, we got, this is what it hits. This is you're working exactly. to change your mind. I or hate your this so much. Have and your sip of your McDonald's Sprite. Answer the goddamn questions, blessing. As you sip your Sprite and speak your lies, how did you remember this? Because in that episode, I put it in my calendar, set it for a year from when we recorded it, and I also went next level. I wrote a note in Google Calendar to mention the episode because I knew I'd forget that too. So, bam! Shout out to Patch J, always holding it down, except when she doesn't. Blessing. What is your answer? So the question was, which is better between Elden Ring and GTA 5? Not even just online, online. but G GTA 5. Is, oh, online specifically? I think so, but feel free to embellish if you have more I'd love to hear, in if, your heart. if you think that there's a difference, if yes. you think one way or the other, like, I'd love I to hear. Because I do parse those. I, put, I, them, I do, put them up against each other. I'd like to hear it. Because I would put online and GTA 5 all as one package. That's how okay. I, I would Fair do enough. it. Fair enough. Sure. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I'm, you didn't um, think I'd ask you, did you? No, I thought I escaped the question. I thought I did a I good job like every bunch of that we ever just throw out there and forget about. I, I forgot about it completely. And when I saw it in my calendar, I thought I was looking at the kind of funny calendar. I'm like, oh, it's blessing doing some content that's like hyper specific <laughs> comparison. No, this is the chickens coming to roost. This well, this is the week of things coming back to bite me because yesterday uh, we did, or a couple days ago now, we did the uh, I lost the pizza bet uh, against him where I bet that Starfield would be the one to come out in the first half of the year and that Redfall would be the one to get delayed later in the year and Tim bet the opposite. And so I did lose that one earlier this week as well. So I wasn't I wasn't expecting my pass to catch up to me this much this week. Um, oh man, I. <sighs> The thing is, it's a lose-lose situation here. No matter what I say, no matter what I say, my notifications are fucked here. And so I'm not even—I'm not even going to think about it, right? I'm going to go with the heart. Oh wow! And my heart—my heart says GTA Five. My heart wow. says GTA Five. Yeah. 
Um, you might, you might have to ask me again in a decade. <laughs> you know, after I've had time Janet for the calendar. Hey man, the calendar <laughs> keeps going. After I have time, I, I've had time for like my nostalgia to sit in and all that stuff. You know, I think in a decade, a decade from now, I'd be able to give you the, the more straight answer. Um, but no, Real GTA, quick, sorry, Janet. When you put this in your calendar, make sure it's both the, the GTA Elden Ring thing and do you have a line on your head permanently from VR? Okay, smart, I got smart, you. Smart. No, I think I, I I go GTA Five just because that uh, that world still. I, I, it speaks to me in terms of how just well designed it is as a Los Santos, right? The diversity of land, the the story there it speaks to me, and then I think also the online elements and how long and how, how much I played online for in GTA is also one that sticks out to me, right? Like I put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into GTA Five versus the 100 hours that I played in Elden Ring. Granted, the 100 hours I played in Elden Ring, every single one of them hours, fucking worth it, right? It was it was a very quality 100 hours, but. I don't know. I think right now I still sit on the side of GTA Five for uh, which one I like better overall. Do you think that that would be the popular opinion? No, but I also think I, I think it wouldn't be the popular opinion because people just have beef with GTA Five because it is the like the popular kid on campus and it is the same. It's like the same way that people will hate on Fortnite, right? Oh man, everybody loves this thing. Oh man, kids love it. Therefore, I gotta hate it because it's so popular. I think it's that, and then also people are salty because they never put out dlc and gotcha. then like online does have its flaws and all this stuff right um and so no i think if you ask most people who like both games which one they like better i think they would probably stick to elden ring because elden ring is a bit more like every it, it feels a bit more attention to detail in terms of the amount of it that hits versus like the vastness of it right like okay. i feel like at moment to moment in elden ring is hitting harder for most people I think for me, I, I look at the vastness of my experience in GTA Five and like my memories of doing the um, the heists and like how special of a moment that was for me because that was sort of my own introduction into doing raid type content. And then like me just being a GTA fan growing up and loving Three and Vice City and San Andreas in particular, and then sure. that carrying into my time with GTA Five, like I, that was just a special experience overall um, versus like. How much i loved elden ring right just as a video game and like it, it, i love them in, in different ways i guess is, is the way to put it but i think gta 5 is just more special to me so what I'm, i want to put up a poll we can check in with here as we go right what what is the question better game would you phrase it that way yeah i think okay. so yeah all right better that game gta question. 5 elden ring and then please show results i'm setting it for an hour so we can keep i would put gta 5 going. plus online it's already gone it's already gone it's already well gone. then it's oh well it's over you know, it's one of those now, things. We'll right. I can delete it. You want me to delete it and do it again? Is it that important? It's yeah. that important for the argument. I'm doing. I'm doing. Hold I think on. so. All right, hold on. Because people are going to ask. People might still ask because they don't read. But at least, yeah, it's not your fault that way. Well, the other way, it would be your fault. It's such a tough question fault. for me, though. Like, I think both of them are in my. Do you think your answer is going to change ten years from now? Possibly. I, it depends on how much I revisit Elden Ring over the, over the years. So it comes but out I, in the I, DLC, maybe. I, yeah, that's the thing is yeah, the DLC hits for Elden Ring, I could see that being a big a big swear. And then if I also go back and I complete all the shit in Elden Ring, I can see that swaying me. It's all tough right, because right. it's apples and oranges at some at, to some extent where I'm like both of them out there are tens. Like both of them are tens for me. It's just which one is a tenner, <laughs> I guess. Which one's more of a ten than the ten? <laughs> which one's more of a ten than the other ten? Janet, you're with GTA, I guess, in this argument, just like I am. You know, I've actually never played GTA V, so wow. I don't have a comment, I guess. So talk to me in uh, You're never gonna play GTA five, five years or something. No, no, no. But right. the thing no, is, no. I'm not going to play Elden Ring, probably. So we'll see if these things change over time. I do want to play GTA V, but I just have not gotten to it. Just I've haven't had the probably time. Probably owned it Just haven't had the times. time. Yeah, you know, I want it's like it's I three consoles, make it generations. You haven't had the time. When, when no, you, you, you know, it's like oh, maybe the next though. one. It's I just keep <laughs> missing the the train. You know, it keeps leaving the station, and you know, one of these days I'm gonna get on there because they they keep coming by. So I think I'll it's a thing where it's point. like you know, obviously I'm not a big Elden, I'm not an Elden Ring fan, and I'm I've always been a GTA fan, and for, I, I think it's similar to what you're talking about, Bless, where it would be the conversation that, and it's weird, right, where. Elden Ring has the moments that people remember because they're gameplay moments and dodging at the rights and beating the thing and you had one one piece of HP left and yada yada you did it or you did it you know the entire way with being nudie or whatever you played with your friend and yada yada yada. Whereas I think GTA's moments are the scripted ones, right? Where it is the cutscenes in the story and like, there's also that anything can happen. What kind of car did you bring? What kind of weapons did you have? But you know GTA combat has never felt great. It always feels like yeah. GTA combat. So it's not like that's what it's hanging on, right?
Yeah, I, I think that comes back to it being a bit apples and oranges for me, too, because I think I'm a different kind of gamer than I was 10 years ago and even five years ago. I wish I you would have just stopped right there. I think I'm a different kind of gamer. I'm a, I'm a different kind of gamer, you know? Like, I, I ain't playing that. No. Like, I'm a different type of player, right? Like, I five, yeah. five years ago, I was not playing from software games, right? I was not playing, uh, like, these super difficult action games or even action or fantasy RPGs of this ilk. Um, sure. And I think over time, I'm probably going to lean more toward the from software type experiences, even versus the, like, Rockstar open world games. And I've even seen that with like rdr2 red Dead redemption 2 when that came out i thought that, that was gonna be my world and i started it i started i got like halfway through and i was just like i'm not enjoying this as much as i thought i was gonna sure. enjoy this and i think that's just a sign of my taste changing and all that stuff um, and the drawers being boring to close and the in the and the, the drawers being boring to close and then also Can't by course camp. dying Come on. And that you sneeze and the whole town is after you yeah it's just a lot, God, a lot of problems dude, did, I, did i tell you that story because that's exactly what happened to me <laughs> I mean, that's like, happened to everybody. That was like everybody's like, they're like was, oh, it's so beautiful. But, but like, don't move in it because it'll all was, just turn on you. That was my breaking point playing Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 where I get to uh, St. Denis, which is the New Orleans area in the game. I'm no, riding it's... through on my horse. I get to the back of it and there's like this swamp in the back of the town. And this is my first time exploring the town. And there's a rainbow that's like shining over the swamp. And legitimately, I'm like, this is so gorgeous. This is so beautiful. And then I press back on my analog stick to turn around. And as I'm turning around on my horse, I knock down a pedestrian. And I'm like, oh, shit. And the p- police see that. <laughs> and they start chasing me through the town. And I'm like, oh, I didn't mean for all this to happen. And then as I'm, like, escaping from the town, they shoot me off of my horse. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then they, like, shoot my horse and kill my horse because, like, I'm behind my horse. They're trying to get to me. But they, sure. my, sure. my horse caught the straight bullet. My horse dies. And I'm like, oh, man, okay, no, I need to figure out how to fix my horse. And as, as I'm trying to figure that shit out, immediately I, I get hit and I die. And I wake up and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I can't revive my horse anymore. And I check back to my save and I don't have a save that's nearby. And I was yeah. like, ah, oh, damn. Like, I, I was so upset. I was so mad when that happened. I think it's an interesting one because it, it, this conversation, I think, reminds me more of uh, being at IGN and having that argument of like top tens and game of the years and stuff. And like, are we yeah. voting for our favorite game or the best game? And yada, yada. So it's like for me, why I pick GTA is one reason, but why I would, you know, the better game, like I might end up voting Elden Ring or talk yeah. myself into it. If like, I was I could, sitting there actually casting great... the vote and like making like a so- scientific uh, yeah, I can, if we're making like a scientific shitting. argument, I would probably argue more on the side of Elden Ring. But if you're asking me which, yeah. which one I like more, I would probably stick with GTA Five. Well, right now, just minutes into the poll, the uh, masses are with the scientific results. Elden Ring has fifty three point seven percent of the vote to the twenty five point four for GTA. That's twenty one. Is the show. I, I always put in the show results thing so people don't. Do uh, that. I was, I I was like, wait a second, there is <laughs> I'll vote on whatever. Not to mention the people in there. Like I fucking. Twitter polls in general, as everybody knows. I haven't gone through the replies. Somebody's in there like, oh, they both pale in comparison to fucking Zelda or some shit. It's like, that's not the argument. I'm asking a very specific question for a fucking podcast for the free content. Get out of my way. I digress. It's time for topic of the show. I got to keep it going. I was, I was, I, I know Barrett's got the graphics, so we need to. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for is upon you before your eyes uh, is a game that is out on PlayStation VR 2 today, uh, March 10th, for $15. Uh, we have had the chance to play it, or at least me and Janet have. Blessing, you didn't have the chance, right? You're reviewing other stuff? Yeah, I've not gotten the chance to play it, unfortunately. Well, that's no, I'm glad. I want, I want you here to ask questions, be a part of it. Um, I'm a lead reviewer on this, um, and I guess where I really want to start even before I score it or say anything about it is Janet Garcia. You had been talking about Before Your Eyes, of course, for years. Uh, this yep. game originally came out on PC April 8th, 2021. Since then, uh, Netflix uh, acqu- uh, released it for their, uh, you know, if you have a Netflix person, you play it on that. You play it on your phone, you play it on your tablet, whatever. That's been since July 2022. You've been talking about this game, and since we're the same person, I'm like, oh, that's something I would enjoy. That's something I, I should play at some point. Janet, what I'm going to do is give you something I've never given anyone, all right? And what that is, is the Greg Miller veto, all right? And that is, Janet, that if you ever go and play a game this goddamn good again, you are allowed to stop. I don't care if I'm reviewing Infamous 4, all right? You come in and you say, Greg, you got to go play this, and I will stop what I'm doing to go play this game. Uh, Before Your Eyes is a 5 out of 5. For my money, it's the first must-play PlayStation VR 2 game. 
And I have not been so emotionally connected, touched, and devastated by a game since Gone Home. Like, and I, I think everybody's heard my Gone Home stories of finishing it and going to hug my ex girlfriend. Like, like it was like, damn, like this thing just fucking wrecked me to the point that I pulled the VR headset off of my face. And like, you know, we'll get into everything. We're not going to do spoilers in terms of what's going on in the game. I think maybe at the very, 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 very end of the show, we can do a little spoiler conversation, me and Janet and Blessing. You can, sure. you can dip uh, or stay if you want. But like, finished this game, took off the headset, and I had been crying for probably the last five minutes in the headset. And I took it off, and it was the most like ridiculous. Thing. I played at the office. I take it off, and I put it on the desk, and I just turn. And the first person I make eye contact with is Nick Scarpino. And Nick looks at me and goes, "You look like you just came off a two week bender." <laughs> and I'm like, "I've been crying for five minutes in this fucking headset." He's like, "I'm sorry." Like this game is spectacular. I was so so uh, blown away by it. Janet, am I wrong? No, uh, this game's awesome. And yeah, I'm so happy to hear that you connected with it as much as I did. Uh, again, as you mentioned, I've been talking about this game since it came out. I played it, I think, like the week it came out, having not known much about it other than, oh, it's a story game and the mechanic is you blink to jump forward in time. Cool. Streamed it. Um, they had really cool stream integration, too, because they use it when you play on PC, it's with the webcam, but they have like it all set up where you can still have your face for streaming and stuff. So anyway, super thoughtful stuff they, they put into this. And it was just so, I mean, you know, beat it in one sitting because it's only about like one and a half to two hours your first time through. And I was so moved by it. Just everything about this is such like a master class of a video game to me. Uh, obviously, it was in my top 10 that year. I don't think it was quite number one, but it was it was definitely in the top five, I believe. Uh, Min Max, we had it in the two tens as well. Everyone I know that's that plays this at least likes it and enjoys it. I mean, they maybe don't like love it quite to the degree that I do, but I have yet to meet someone that played it and was like, mm, I didn't like it other than maybe if they had like weird tech issues. That's like the only thing I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Um, I think what's so smart about it is while on the surface, it may seem kind of uh, gimmicky. It's such a good device for telling the story they're telling uh, as well as I think they get really creative with their usage. Cause I think when you hear that pitch of me saying, Oh, every time you blink, it jumps forward. You're thinking, you might think, Oh, this sounds like it'll be like a mess of, you know, I'm going to be spinning around. It's going to be going so quick, but <laughs> they pick their spots for when they're like, all right, the timer's on the next blink's going to jump you and like ways to extend the time and sit in moments. And so much to say about this. This is also a five out of five for me. This is an absolutely phenomenal game. And I'm my only sadness about it being on PSVR 2 is that it wasn't there for the launch of the platform because sure. I genuinely think so much of the conversation, whether or not, you know, it would change anyone's score. I don't, I don't even care. It just, I just think it would have done so much for the platform and for the game to have attention at that level when yeah. those launch reviews were going out. Um, but when I heard about this technology, the inside out eye tracking with PSVR 2, immediately I said, oh, before your eyes has to come to this thing. Um, I was out one of the episodes y'all were talking about PSVR 2, I think when Taylor was on from IGN. And Barrett was like, oh, yeah, I, I believe Janet mentioned before. And I, I was like running, doing my marathon training. And I was thinking before your eyes. And then Barrett mentioned it. I was like, OK, good, good. It got in there. Like someone's I've there been <laughs> championing this game. Like this game is why like Skybound Games were like me and Bless did sponsor stuff with them. That's why they even knew who I was, just because they're like, oh, we see that you love this game. And then, you know, we like talked from there. But like, I absolutely adore this to pieces and have since launch. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you finally played it. And I'm glad you loved it because it was yeah, really scary, I too. There's a lot to, I think, d delve into. And so if you know nothing about it, we've said it a few different times. Yeah, the, the idea here is that you are blinking to move time forward. But even that, I think, is boiling down. Uh, it's too reductive for what's going on. Because, yes, you're blinking, but it's in specific instances. Uh, there's also other you your it's PlayStation VR is using your eye track so you you're you're looking around you look at there's other icons on the screen at times I think in the trailer Barrett showed you saw answering a cell phone uh, there's interacting things you're doing you know you're making art you're you know playing the piano you're doing all these different things with your eyes so it's not strictly sitting there blinking 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 to move things it's in specific instances and obviously this is all held up by the narrative of what's going on and what's you know from the very start of the game you're dead. You are a soul uh, being transported by the ferryman to the gatekeeper who will judge your life and say, hey, was this person a, a worthy person to go on to paradise kind of thing? And so the idea is that 
you know, he's the ferryman's like, listen, go back and think about your earliest memory and we'll start there and we'll go through your life. And you, so obviously you go back and you're a little baby named Benny. Of course, my son's named Ben. Uh, we call him Benny all the time. Right. And so you're going through as, you know, it turns out your mom, who's this accountant, but you know, was also basically like an aspiring composer and your dad is just some office worker, but a fine dad or whatever. Like you see, you know, they're there, you know, you start getting into this piano thing. Your mom encourages you to do that. You know, you, there's a, the girl next door. Do you, do you, choose to you know do things in terms of you know go out and have not your, your first relationship i mean your kids but you know what i mean like your first crush with her or do you stay in and work on your piano and then that evolves out into like okay well as you saw in there like art you can you know having an art uh, um, exhibit and all these different things as your life goes on and then being judged on that and like it is just so well done and i think what's interesting about it janet is to jump tracks from the actual gameplay but to bring it back to a larger playstation vr conversation what I, I know, I know even by calling it, right? Because I'm going to say this probably for the quite some time, and if not ever, as I guess it want to change. But this is the first must play PlayStation VR 2 title. I think a lot of people, you know, have been mad at our PlayStation VR coverage that we're not more excited and we didn't love it as much as you did, and yada, yada, yada. I think a lot of people could easily throw this back in my face, right? Of like, you fucking love Moss. Why isn't that the first PlayStation uh, VR 2 must play game, right? And, you know, you've critiqued the launch lineup for having a bunch of ports and having older games. Why does this port matter so much? I think the fact that it would be, again, reductive to be like, oh, well, this is just uh, before your eyes. You can you could play it on the PC. You can play it right now on your phone. I was shocked as somebody who's Janice talked about this. I've always been like, well, the way to play it's with the webcam. And then it, so I'm not going to play it on my phone. Oh, well, they're coming to VR. I'll wait for VR. When I after I beat it here, I started it on my phone to be like, how do they do the eye blinking? And it works with your iPhone's camera to do it. Yeah. Like, Damn, this is fucking impressive. Anyways, though, I think all that said is this is still a new way to play this game. And it is still I you know even playing it on my phone uh, after the fact. Granted, I knew you know any swerves or changes were going to come and where the story was going. It still was that I was playing a game and I was there and I the, to be completely lost in that experience to have that wrapped around your face to have it you know 360 degrees as you work around to not be able to escape it in some way, which is both s scary sounding but way more immersive for what you're doing. Like that is one of the reasons I think this game hits so fucking hard this time around and in this way. Janet, if some of you played it on, you know, your PC, did you feel that this is like the definitive version of it? Um, definitive, I think, is a little dramatic in the sense that I think the other versions felt fully complete, like to your point, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the PC version felt great. Um, Isaiah, my, you know, my boyfriend Isaiah played it on his iPad and he had a great time with it. I looked at, you know, how his gameplay tracked and everything was good. Um, but I think this is the best way to play it. Sure. Um, I think if you had to pick your platform, PSVR 2 is the best. It's so comfortable it's so simple and again like i you know i always play with how like my character would canonically be so since you're the whole thing takes place you're sitting on a boat on the way to the afterlife and then you like relive your life so you're still kind of in this sort of stationary memory vibe position so i just sat i felt like so comfortable the entire time yeah. i didn't get any fatigue from playing it i even played afterwards to get a couple of trophies before we um started uh, the show now i and, can't wait to platinum this and it's not a hard platinum it's just been life has gotten in my way at every yeah. step like it's like i'm very stoked to get back down to sitting and doing it yeah yeah i'll talk well, we can talk more about the platinum i think towards the the spoiler stuff because i sure. do have a couple like pl trophy comments though generally it is a pretty achievable platinum and there's um chapter select and stuff to make it so you don't have to keep like replaying the game the whole time. Um, but what's so surprising to me, especially maybe it's just because it's been two years since I first played it. But I sat down kind of expecting, yeah, I know this is going to be better in the sense that it's in VR. But, you know, I'm kind of just doing it to say I did it right to do my due yeah. diligence for the show. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to floor me as much as it did because I knew the story. I knew, you know, what emotional beats will hit. I even made a lot of the same decisions in my first playthrough with this just because I'm like, I just want to play it the way I normally would. But one, I forgot some of the little detail moments that hit me. And two, I think just because you are in such a deep level of immersion, oh my God, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. Like, you feel it so deep. And also, technically, you feel it with the, the optics and the, head, the headband or whatever. <laughs> but like, it hits so hard, you know, like, um again i'm trying to kind of talk about it without talking about it but there's um so again with the blinking mechanic being so smart and well thought out and creative uh there are parts in the game where you don't just blink you hold your eyes shut and they kind of have a different icon for it and you sort of figure out oh i gotta hold my eyes shut here and sometimes 
the characters will say, oh, close your eyes right now or something. And you'll know that you have to do that. But there are like scenes where so much is happening around me and you feel it. And then they say, like, shut your eyes. And you're listening to the conversation. There's all this background noise. And there's just an immense like feeling of of dread and like sadness for yourself and the people. There's like a, there's such a weight to yeah. the game that I think is enhanced in that VR experience. And I'm like, holy cow, like I am you know, this kid growing up, you know, I'm 10 years old. It's like, it's just such a, it's so, and that's what's so fucking smart about it. And what's so good about <laughs> it in general is that it is a game where you are reliving your life in short bursts and the mechanics totally hit that again. What do I always talk about? People that, you know, boohoo narrative games or is like, oh, it's not gamey enough. And again, I'm like, I think the more you learn to appreciate the genre, you can see the nuance of what is good narrative gameplay. And this is such perfect narrative gameplay like i can't imagine them telling the story as impactful in any other way and i think it's a sign of like a really well thought out structure for telling that story that you want to get across much like uh gone home i'm so lucky that this didn't get spoiled for me now the difference there is that remember i play I, if you've heard my dumb stories before i played gone home like you know three or four days after the the review embargo not two years after the launch of this i'm so lucky nothing happened if you haven't either don't listen to the end of the show and go play the game and do the thing but it was the idea that i played probably j maybe just about half of it maybe a little bit more than half again i can tell you later at the end of the show uh, where i it was where i had to pause it take a break and and go take care of stuff and and i was catching up with jen about what I, she's like well you know what are you playing right now for work and i was like oh i'm playing this and this is what's happening and da, da 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 and i was like oh you know you know i'm playing as this character named ben and like you know and she's like how much is this game going to wreck you and i'm like you know what i don't think it's going to because and i like laid out my entire like here's what i think is going to happen and this i think they're being pretty clear that that and, I, and like none of that is what it was like oh fuck this is like i love it when a game can totally catch me off guard and i don't know yeah. where it's going bless what questions do you have about I, I, I almost don't want to ask any questions because like I, yeah. you, you guys have sold me so well on it and I almost don't want to hear okay. anything, uh, anything else on it. Um, I guess my question would be like, where does it, where do you feel like it stands in terms of, is this one, one that you're going to keep in mind toward the end of the year when you're talking about games in 2023 in terms of like best VR game or like, you know, best game I played this year and in, in those conversations, do you think is one that's going to stick in that regard? I will be utterly, VR, utterly shocked if this is not my top 10 at the end of the, the year. Mm. We'll have the best it, year of Greg games of all time if this is not high on my list. Top five, at least. Like, I think it will like, be in my top 10 only because it's not a this year of the game. It, it wasn't my top yeah. 10 when it went down, um, but it will be in my top VR games for, you know, for thinking game awards stuff, because this is new to VR. And obviously that does take work to, you know, it's not. It's, it's such a unique thing to like the VR platform where if you even though it's worked to also like port something to Xbox or PlayStation that isn't suddenly re-enter it into like action adventure games of the year because it already came out. But I think because they had to do like that work of creating it in that different context or putting it into that different context that I would I would plan to nominate this for best VR game. And I hope that slash imagine a lot of other people will, especially because I do think it helps that for a lot of people, this probably is their first time playing it. Um, Cause again, not everyone, and that's, that's, what, that's what was so great and what is always so great about games coming to more platforms. Obviously, you mm -hmm. know, PlayStation podcast, we talk about games that are on PlayStation, but that's why we had stuff like, you know, I think Bless was the one that had led up the episode of the port to PlayStation episode we had, or, uh, you know, we talked about having what games we're looking out for. And so, you know, part of that is the desire to have more people able to play it. And the more before your eyes has gone since launching, like the more accessible it's become in easier platforms. You know, not everyone has a PC with a web, with a nice webcam that can run it, you know, but most people, most people have a phone, most people have Netflix. And now again, PSVR 2, obviously an extreme in terms of like fandom, not every PlayStation fan is gonna have it, um, but also hopefully it'll create a buzz and get people more into the platform and say, you know what, everyone's talking about this, like, you know, and this is the kind of thing I'm talking about where it's like, this is something that can really bolster the platform. And even though, yeah. yes, it's not a new game, but it hits so hard and it's such an underrated game and that just not enough people have played it. Again, I feel like if you play it, you're at least going to be like, this is a damn good game. Again, maybe you won't be as over the moon as I am or Greg is, but 
I would be hard pressed to have someone play it and be like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, this, no, this game fucking hits. I think, again, like, this is what I was talking about for what I want out of PlayStation VR 2, right? And that's food. And I want there to be uh, signposts and I want there to be milestones and I want there to continue to be great games on it. But more than importantly, great games is great experiences. And it's, you know, when I was talking about my uh, thoughts on PlayStation VR 2, right? I did the, well, it's like Dave and Buster's where there's all these different games on it and I might want to jump in for five, 10, half an hour with these games, but then I bounce off and do I really need to come back to that arcade machine? Am I really being pulled to finish any of these games and feeling it? Like before your eyes, not only pulled me all the way through. And again, since it's hard to talk about, uh, or not, I guess not, like blink to advance the future. If you stop and think about that for a second, there are moments where I'm, you, I am trying not to blink. Like there is, the story is being told. There is dialogue happening and you can, blink and jump it and so it becomes that thing of like oh god don't blink don't blink or i blink too soon fuck and like Dada. like it was one that i finished and immediately wanted to go back and not only get the platinum in but also do a replay of and listen to conversations that i fucked up on and, and hang out longer in that like the fact that it is only an hour and a half long two hours whatever it's going to take you i think mean, works so well for what it is and it is an experience to go through and, and enjoy the entire way and i think it feels different than the I'm doing a job simulator type of game, which I feel like its own genre of PlayStation VR games or a climbing game or a bow and arrow game. And sometimes both a climbing and bow and arrow game. Like this was something that is, even if you had heard about it before, is so fresh to experience in VR and to be part of that. And I, I can't say enough things about it. Like, you know, it's one of those uh, developers, goodbye world games. I forget if I said that at the top and like, I'm all about this developer now that, you know, their, their Twitter bio says they're working on their next one. And I can't fucking wait to see what that is. Is there yeah, anything? I think two. No, go ahead, bless. Uh, uh, I was, well, was going to ask: Is there anything you guys want future VR games to learn from before your eyes and how it approach VR? Yeah, I mean, for me, like obviously, I don't think every game can be quite like it in the sense that you know, original is only original until it gets like worn out. But I do think it's funny because they made it before PSVR two even came out. But it's such a meaningful use of the tool set. And again, that's what's just a weird, unique thing where it's like, well, we made this on our own using other tools and then it just worked really well for this tool set. But it fits what you're doing so well. Even like the haptic feedback, which I know has been like controversial, makes it sound like it's more of a hot topic than it is. But, you know, people have been like, ah, I don't know if I really like the haptic feedback in the headset. Here, I think it works really well. It helps kind of like move the little pacing and like if you have your eyes closed and you like it opens it up and like it all fits so well together. So I think just creating experiences that are unique to VR. And, you know, for what's worth, like, I think there's totally space for a plethora of things. But to Greg's point, I think so often we do get that Dave and Buster style arcade quick fun. Like, it's a good time, but not like it might not be hit, like having as big of a punch. And that's not to say those games can't be impactful because my top two games right now are like this and what the bat. And I like and I stand both of those games like really heavily. And I'm going to be talking about them for a long time. But in order, again, what we were talking about with PlayStation, the being able to hit those different beats. You know, we talk about what are the weak spots with like the shooters or the online or the whatever, you know, it's always striving to have greatness from everything and not fall too much into, I think, the mechanical or genre tropes. So I think looking at this, it's just such a great example of look at how they're using this technology and really marrying it well with the overall goal of what do you want this game to accomplish and using those tools yep. to accomplish that task. Yep. Yeah, I think for me, uh, it, it picks up right where Janet left off, right? Where it's like yeah, the tools to accomplish the task. What, uh, for me, I would boil it down to what do you want to say? Like this game has something to say. And I don't mean like a cultural message uh, from the mountain. I mean, like what is, the, what is the one sentence you're trying to say with this game? What are you trying to make people feel when they play this game? And I think this game nails that. And I think so many other games want to get hung up on the mechanics and you know i want it to feel like you're shooting a bow i want it to feel like you're in a gunfight like that's great for again the dave and busters arcade experiences we're talking about but like before your eyes is wants you to feel and it wants to resonate and it wants to live within you and it wants to like i haven't stopped thinking about this game since i played it like that's why i play games and that's you know why certain games that are more about mechanics and parry and dodge aren't my jam and i aren't the ones i would sit there and talk about for years like this one is that i think the fact that they took something that already worked on a different platform and made it, I I personally think better, but I'm not also the expert by any stretch of the imagination and took my time getting to this. Like, I just think it's, it's just a message to PlayStation VR developers, right? Of like, think outside the box. What do you want to say? Make something unique. I think there's going to be a reason that 
for the rest of PlayStation VR 2's life cycle, this will be mentioned to me. In the, or I will mention this, I should say, uh, in the same way I mentioned for PlayStation VR 1 Moss, where Moss Book 1 came around, and I was like, yo, this is actually cool. Like, it, it starts in a storybook. You get pulled in. Like, da, 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 da. And then Moss Book 2 is, you know, equally as awesome, but it's you know what it is. It's a known factor. And that'll also be interesting for this one of what does uh, Goodbye World Games' next one look like. Is it going to be another blinking game? And if so, how do you keep that fresh, and what do you do with it, and how do you not make it feel like... Before Your Eyes 2. We'll have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Before Your Eyes, PlayStation VR 2. Uh, like I said, out today, March 10th, $15, a 5 out of 5 from us here at Kinda Funny. Speaking of us here at Kinda Funny, we couldn't do this job if you didn't support us over at patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, of course, you can get each and every episode of the show ad-free. You can watch us record it, usually, when there isn't a review embargo. And of course, you can get us uh, the ability to watch all the other podcasts live, get dozens of different exclusive monthly bonus shows over there, daily bonus shows if you count Gregways, and so much more. But you're not over there, Jack. So, here's a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Look how cool I look. You too can look this cool. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and so much more. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. They'll also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million meals to date. That's fantastic. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back exclusively for y'all listeners and watchers right now. Shady Rays has given out their best deal of the new year. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. These are five star rated by over 200,000 people. Again, that shadyrays.com use the code kinda funny shout out to honey for sponsoring this episode honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iphone or computer and thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past and we all know there's nothing better than the feeling of saving money honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart when you check out the honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons you wait a few seconds you see the fun little dancing guy honey searches for coupons and it finds you the best ones and then you just watch the prices drop we here at kind of funny have been using honey for years and it's helped us save thousands on tech costumes food you name it honestly i just love how easy it is to just set and forget and save that's the best part honey doesn't just work on desktops it works on your phone too you just activate it on safari on your phone you save on the go if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny blessing what's happening this week in playstation uh, let's start off talking about Rocksteady and how can we fix the Suicide Squad game. Oof. Uh, it was reported earlier today as of the time that we're recording this episode yesterday, if you're listening to this on Friday. Uh, Rocksteady Suicide Squad has reportedly been delayed again following showcase criticism. Uh, I'm pulling from Andy Robinson at Video Games Chronicle. Warner Brothers has reportedly delayed Rocksteady Suicide Squad game until the second half of 2023, following negative responses to a recent gameplay showcase. According to Bloomberg sources, Warner has decided to push the title from its previously announced May release date until later this year. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is the next game from the, creative, uh, from the creator of the Batman Arkham series, billed as a genre-bending action-adventure shooter set in an open-world metropolis. The game was originally billed for release last year, but was eventually delayed until May 2023. Suicide Squad was showcased during a PlayStation live stream last month, but received some criticism from fans due to its live service elements, such as the requirement to play online even in single player mode. The presentation also confirmed that the game will feature a battle pass, which Rocksteady claimed would only contain cosmetic items. Post game support, including new characters and missions, were also announced. Greg, I've not heard what you had to say about this. What are your, what are your thoughts oh here? Oh my Jesus fucking Christ. Wait, about the delay or Suicide Squad in general? Uh, I mean, both. Okay. Starting with a delay. Because I missed... Well, let's start there. Oh, yeah, you missed the state of play, didn't you? Yeah, and I had a great fucking Twitter about it that really did well, and I appreciate everybody supporting me as I fucking cry my eyes out and fucking can't believe the world I live in. Because what I tweeted, of course, at, at the state of plays, because I wasn't able to do the racks because I was uh, life, um, that this is such a fucking monkey paw wish. 
where it's like, I, 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 God damn it, do I love Rocksteady and did I love the Batman games? But of course, I wanted them to make a Superman game. So they're like, okay, cool. Guess what? You're in Metropolis. The Justice League's there. Flash is there. You got Wonder Woman. She's gonna be Superman's gonna be there. Lex Luthor's. There. We're bringing everybody in, and like, all, and you get it's a games of service, and you get to play as the Suicide Squad. It's like, what the fuck? Like, what the? F-? And I've been vocal about that from the launch, where like when they initially revealed it, like I was like, I'm not, try- and I'm still, I'm not trying to be a downer and i'm not trying to push you know like what i want is what everybody wants kind of shit it's just like i do not want to be the edgy bad guys anti-heroes i don't want to be the anti-hero i'm so over that fucking thing and i it's just like i it's i'll I'll play it i'm gonna look forward to it and it's suicide it's it's dc and i you know i'm interested like but i'm not like excited i'm not excited about this game and the state of play I watched and I had the exact same reaction. I think so many, and I shouldn't say that. I had the exact same reaction so many people had, which was like, what? Okay. Like, they're like, everybody feels, I'm like, everybody's just shooting guns. Like, I I get that. Like, that just doesn't look fun. Like, this doesn't look like, oh man, I can't wait to play this. And I know so many people, you know, wanted, like, we're really hung up on the games of service bit. And like, we're like, yeah, they should, like, Avengers, this, and like, talk about like Avengers in a negative context, which there's plenty of reasons to, but at least watching, avengers and this is not how you what you want to say about how you played avengers it felt like it like everybody looked different everybody looked unique to it not when they started cloning characters and you got you know <laughs> jade foster <laughs> thor but you know what i mean of like thor looked different than hulk looked different than captain america and it's like there was you know like i main cap and goldfarb main uh kamala and it was like i look at this and i'm like i don't want to be any of these characters and even when I do find the one that fits the best, I, I doubt I'm going to be so locked into them that like if somebody else wanted to be Harley or something, I wouldn't switch off to what is it's a whole can of worms. So Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is still one of those. That I'm just like, shit, OK, well, this is happening. And I, you know, Rocksteady's a good developer. So let's see what they got. But I am not excited for it. And I don't expect it to set the world on fire. So then today, this news of, hey, they're delaying. They're going to delay the game. And it's like on the one hand, wow that's cool on the one hand of like they are listening to the audience and they're going to try to but then it's the other one of like wait but what are you going to do like we're we're talking about the core concept of the game is what people don't like the game's a service everybody looks the same everybody kind of feels the same or i shouldn't say feels because we don't know but everybody looks the same and the, the, the battle passes and it's like are you just going to change the menus we've bitched about too or are you going to try to put some of that in the back like this is still going to be the same game unless they say hey we're delaying it multiple years are canceling it but that's do you think that's possible like do you think we get to the point where we get a few months down the line and they're like hey we don't have a release date for this for this thing yet we're still working on it and internally they're just like yeah we got to figure out how to we like this is more core to what the game is the things that we that people want us to change about it we got to start from ground zero and the ways that we've seen games get announced and then disappear and then don't come back for a long time (sighs) It's one of those things, never say never. We've learned that enough in the video game industry. My gut reaction would be no, is that I think there's enough of a sunk cost into this game that you, I mean, especially for where they're at, which is the finish line, right? You can't sit there and be like, man, all right, everybody hates the games of service model and the live stuff and being connected. So let's go back. Like, that's the core of the game. So like, you would have to blow it up, start from scratch. And at that point, you got to say, I think you could release what it is and the hardcore people who go and play it are going to make we're going to it's better to make some money off of this rather than nothing because i also think that on top of the games of service thing there is enough people and probably not you know, as many dc nerdy people like me but there are a lot of people who are just like i don't really i don't really care about being the suicide squad i don't really care about like it's not like that so if you're going to be like well let's make a game that's justice league or let's go do something else or make a superman or whatever the fuck they're going to do next you could still end this and go do that janet can we fix suicide squad um, I mean, this is uh, such a rough, rough question because I'm like trying to like navigate like eight different caveats. Um, I think in the amount of time given, no, if it is indeed broken, right? Because I think that question implies that it's already like, you know, fucked up, which it might be. But again, to, you know, Greg, echo Greg's point, we technically don't know yet. And again, like until we don't even have any hands on, which you still don't even know from that when you do like a preview, you know, you really don't know until you're fully in it, have reviewed it can get the full experience whatever i will say this amount of time doesn't seem like it'll it's enough time to do anything significant um to your other question i don't think i don't think we're this game just gonna disappear and reappear you know as a whole new game that everyone loves the look of 
it'll probably just be, you know, fine tuning, tweaking some things. And again, maybe the, the negative reception was just enough to say, hey, do you see how people are already ready to like flame this? We got to iron out that other stuff I was telling you about. And then again, this is very speculative on how, how these conversations go. But I could see that maybe just being, oh, you know what, we were already on the fence and people are kind of like not super hot on it. Let's push it back. Again, the idea that we talked about on Games Daily of, you know, you mentioning maybe it's also to get out of the way of some of these other releases, maybe give it more space. Um, and, and to what I mentioned too, like it could also be more time for, you know, different marketing angles or to maybe even read like, I don't know what their plans are, if they're doing hands-on preview coverage or what, but maybe thinking, okay, well, we have to be able to show them what we feel like our game does well or how they might have a positive experience mm -hmm. for this. So that might be even redoing a preview build or something where it's like, we were going to have them be here, but now we got to have them do this other thing. And we're going to string these missions together to try to recontextualize it because we also don't know for a fact how good how like well what we saw captures one the essence of what the game is and two what they want us to think the game is and that's not like in a shady way but you always want to put your best foot forward and hey this is what we feel it does well this is what we feel it is this is what we want you to walk away with and if nothing else it seems like as a whole the audience did not walk away with what they wanted them to whether it's due to the quality whether it's due to diversity of mechanics and again this doesn't mean that it's an inaccurate representation of it but obviously they look at this and they're like it's it's not going well let's try to reconfigure <laughs> or, or get our footing you know i don't think again they're going to overhaul it like oh now it's cool i made a separate secret game that we'll bring out and you know this isn't focus testing this is we're already there and like oh fuck like this isn't the marketing's not going well the height's not going well we need a way to try to regain some good faith and, in this before the launch and i think that's a really interesting take on it that is probably accurate as well where it is like how much can you they can't change what i think a lot of people don't like like this fucking version of lex luther wearing his punisher outfit like what the fuck is uh, you know what i mean whatever that's just a first glance thing maybe it makes sense again but like maybe it is just a way to let's distance ourselves from the state of play let's take a breath let's work on some things that we already wanted to or bug fixing is or just polished so that we can say hey we were working on something so that when we get there people know we tried even though it won't fix the things they want let alone like and i'm i do not know and i haven't followed closely so if it's already happened sorry maybe get your first if not another game informer cover and in month of coverage maybe get another ign first where you could really hey this wasn't the way to introduce it so let's go through and talk about what makes harley quinn harley quinn what's what makes captain boomerang captain boomerang you know the battle pass they talked about i think it was battle pass maybe it was just in their dlc conversation in general uh that there are gonna be more playable characters down the road maybe you get in front of that you start revealing those they're like guess what it is but you are going to get a superman a batman a, a wonder woman that you're going to get to play as eventually or something like that try to you know put people like myself in my place of like oh okay maybe even push those up if that's possible to be like you know what day and date you're going to get a couple heroes that you could put in there and play which i'm you know would probably break it but whatever you know there's ways to try to adjust it and really market it this seems like a great time for crisis center marketing of like hey shit this went really badly and people are not excited about this game so let's try to dig ourselves out of this hole yeah and that's why i come back around to jana mentioning that it's a it's a tricky question in terms of how to fix the suicide squad because is the problem the game or is it a is it a combined thing, right? Is this a failure of game design and game development and like what the game is, or is it a failure of what the marketing has been, or is it both in tandem, right? And I think to some extent, it can be a little bit of both where yep. that state of play should have been the moment where it is, oh, we all watch it. Oh, I'm shit. Sold. All right, this looks incredible. Oh man, okay, we all know what this is now. We can all hold hands and go, oh damn, Suicide Squad looks dope. Not many people, if any people really had that response. Like the best response I saw, I think was from, probably me and andy and like people who were like oh we'll we'll play this <laughs> like this reminds this reminds you of how we had fun playing outriders right but i think for a suicide crackdown, squad game a yeah like a, a crackdown type game but like for a suicide squad game from rocksteady that has been hyped uh up and um, um with like cool cinematic trailers and all this stuff up until now i think it won a lot more from that and i think you know the question isn't even how do you fix uh suicide squad because i think that is too late. I think the game is going to be what it's going to be. I think it is going to be how do you fix Suicide Squad's launch? And I think to do that, yeah, delay it out of a 
somewhat busy time because right now in May you're talking about uh, Zelda, you're talking about Diablo coming in uh, a few weeks later in June along with Street Fighter um, and um, Final Fantasy 16. You're talking about I think Redfall coming out in May, early May as well. Um, yeah, get out of there, see if you can fall in sometime within the second half of the year in the fall season, hopefully away from Spider-Man and Starfield, right? Like find some secluded couple week span where maybe you can shine and have people flock to you because you are maybe the outriders of a couple of weeks in December or something. Y'all, if you want to be the outriders, then just push it to January, February. You know what I mean? Just like be there when we come out into the new year and we just want something new to play. And that's it. Because that I, 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 I listened to you guys live react on state of play. And I, it was the same thing of like you and Andy being like, yeah, we'd play this. Yeah, it's like Outriders. And it's like, that is, ex- I look at it and it's, that's exactly what I get from it, right? Where it's weird to see a game that is like, oh, Greg, it's based on one of the fucking universes you love. It's happening in your favorite city in that universe. And I look at it and it's like, yeah, when they do the beauty, the beauty pan shots and I see like a Lexcore, I see a Superman statue. That's really cool. When I look at the gameplay, I'm like, you're just running around shooting purple shit. Like, I don't even, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't scream DC or Metropolis to me, but I'd run through and see and try to find that. So I think you really got to figure out how you're going to launch this thing at maybe possibly a time that isn't going to be conflicting with other gigantic releases coming out around there. And then also, yeah, like what can you do in terms of your DLC plan? Can you tee up some of the post-launch content to come out a bit more rapidly now that you're launching this in the fall as opposed to in, in the spring? Can you, yeah, maybe do an early access feature or some kind of closed beta for media and for people who want to get their hands on the game to, and hopefully have it be a thing where, hey, let's let's start with a bang. Like, let's make sure that first mission that people play is a hit so that way they're able to evangelize to their friends and go hey no i played suicide squad and like so far it's a fucking banger right like yeah. i think those are the kinds of things you want to you, you want to do i think suicide squad as an ip like to your point right like is a tough one to i think get people hype over especially when the gameplay when you look at the gameplay it's not backing it up right like we're not talking about a justice league game we're not talking about an avengers game we're talking about suicide squad i've never had the hankering to want to play as king shark personally like harley quinn is cool i like harley quinn but for me, that's like the one out of maybe a couple of Suicide Squad characters that I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, I'd, I'd, I'd check that out. But I'm not going crazy over it, right? I'm not yeah, like, yeah. oh, let's fucking go, Harley Quinn. Uh, so I think you want you you got to um, like you got to really be able to show that game in a way where the gameplay is the thing where people go, oh, shit. All right. Cool. Right. And you're able to back that up with some of the story stuff as well, because even the story stuff we've seen through the um, trailers that we've seen before. And I would say even with the this latest state of play that stuff wasn't hitting that much right like i i i the idea of having the justice league there is dope right the idea of killing the justice league i think is a really cool idea but a lot of the dialogue a lot of the back and forth a lot of the like humor and jokes haven't been hitting as as much as like free peak suicide squad stuff does and when i think of peak suicide squad i'm only thinking of the suicide squad movie right like i'm not the james gunn one (laughs) the james gunn one right yeah like for me, that's my favorite Suicide Squad. And also, I also like Birds of Prey, and I like the Peacemaker show. But yeah, I think you got to bring more. You got you got to bring the quality writing to it. And I'm not seeing I'm not mm. seeing that mm. out of the trailers as well. And so, yeah, I don't know how you fix the Suicide Squad, but I think you can do what you can to make sure that the launch is good, right? And I think delaying it for that is probably a good idea. Crisis marketing. Let's see what they got up their sleeve. Let's see what they got. Uh, and then lastly, for PlayStation updates, Discord voice chat is now available on PlayStation 5. This is Owen S. Good at Polygon. The latest PlayStation 5 system software update is available to all users right now, bringing with it integrated Discord voice chat and additional support for 1440p displays. The update, announced at the beginning of February, also includes some quality of life enhancements to the PS5 social and sharing features. Version 7 of the PS5 software is available for all consoles worldwide. With it, players may join Discord voice chats from the PS5 console, enjoy better visual performance on 1440p displays thanks to variable refresh rate support, use voice commands to capture video clips of gameplay uh this feature is in preview mode uh or preview state for us and uk users only they may say hey playstation capture that uh, and the console will save a clip whose length is determined by the user's current setting uh, players may also direct the console to save a clip from anywhere from 15 seconds to 60 minutes by saying hey playstation capture the last x minutes or the the last x seconds um wednesday, uh, wednesday mornings playstation blog post also has much more on the new functions um that also includes the ability to manually upload game captures to the playstation app let's freaking go and then you can also easily access your playstation save data uh and more that you can check out on the playstation blog 
Uh, it's oh, all yeah. about the dual sense controller w- update wirelessly. Oh, let's go. Yeah. I'm is so fucking the- I'm so fucking sick of every time I turn it on, I'll be like, your controller is out of date. Do you want to plug it? I'm like, no, I'm on the couch. Fuck off. Now, I think I got the, that happened for the first time yesterday, right? Where like I got hit with the firmware and then I booted up my PS5 and it was like, hey, you want to update your controller? I thought it was before that. But oh, did they, have way, they done that before? Recent. I, I feel like it might have been the, the update before this. I think well, why does it say it then before- it's on the bullet points here? Wednesday morning's PlayStation blog post has much more on the new functions inside the software update, which includes updating the DualSense controller. Yeah, maybe wirelessly. it was just now. I it assure you, as somebody though. who gets yelled at all the time by his fucking PlayStation, it's it's brand new. Yeah, I'll say yesterday was the first time where I didn't have to plug in my DualSense to the console to update it, and it was an experience. I just sat yeah, there, and it just happened, and I was like, oh, let's fucking go. It's yeah, nice, too, to- that like, that's everything, too. Like, even the, uh, oh, my God, what are they called? The VR ones? The Dual? Oh, the Sense controllers? Thank you. Yes, the sense controllers. The VR sense? Uh, uh, I think they're just sense. Right? Are they just Isn't sense? Isn't there like a name? That, that is... They might just be the sense. Loop, the loopy ones. Those also update <laughs> the wireless. Loops. The sense controllers. They're just the sense controllers. We're right. We're right. Controllers. Everybody calm down. <laughs> Stop second guessing yourself. A single sense. Not a dual <laughs> the, sense. A the single, single sense. senses. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's just the sense because they're all your mm-hmm. senses now. Even though there's two of them. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, two makes one because, you know, they don't, well, not all, one doesn't have all the buttons. So. I get it. So it's half. It's two halves of a sense. Exactly. Which is one exactly. Sense. <laughs> Thank you. Two half sense. See, and they said we were going to use math in real life. Here we they go. Never did. Look at yeah. us. Uh, yeah. For me, the you know, I, I I'm excited that Discord's there because I know it's been annoying before when I'm like, ah, oh, God, I'm over on the couch and I got to drag the laptop over and like get my ear AirPods, do it off my phone and the connection shitty. I'm way more excited to use the regular old headset and use it through the interface to play. But in terms of something I will use every time i possibly can it's the wireless update which i love yeah wireless update is huge uh discord integration uh is huge and then yeah you, um manually uploading your game captures to playstation app is huge as well like that's one that i like i run into that all the time where like up until now it's been um automatic where you save a thing and then it'll just kick it to the cloud and then 75 percent of the time it doesn't upload all the way for some reason at least on my playstation 5 uh and so having the ability to go actually no i just want to upload this very specific thing so yeah. i can download on my phone and then show janet um that that's great i love that the amount of times i like oh my oh man i want to get this bit so i'll cap you know it's well it, however many seconds it's been or i'm not even sure how far back it was so i just do the five minute record and i'm like i'll just download that I'll, and then i'll go edit that but when yeah. i jump in to edit it on the playstation it then is like freaks out and then i gotta wait for the five minute video to get uploaded and then the f- f- four second update i'm like god, god damn it is this this has to be like the biggest update we've gotten for firmware on the playstation right this is jam PS5. with features for ps5 yeah i think so right maybe there's a lot of bullet points here and i'm i'm loving all of them is there what's like what's the thing that's left that we want i talked about this with him a little bit that i would love to see them add themes i don't know how they would do it with they're the current themes. PS5 themes are UI. dead, themes themes are dead. Like but i miss there's them too so much, much advertising space they won't let you not have you know what i mean oh, god but i think really like the the thematic ads it comes i for me personally like i still want folders like oh, I you know like you're not that. liking the game lists no where I have to go to my library <laughs> and then click on game list or whatever. Yep. No, I want to put a folder right there on the home screen. That's PlayStation VR, PlayStation five, you know, whatever I want to do. And then click into it and click into it and see all the stuff there. Um, I still want uh, the thing Xbox has. What is it? The quick resume? A quick resume. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I forgot that. You don't love your like, switcher. <laughs> yeah. Remember when no, we got our PlayStation five? Like, like, what oh, even is that? That's just clicking another fucking iPad. Oh, no, like they just, really it just quickly closes whatever I'm working on to open the other one. They just Xbox, really so. like brand the, smart branding on their part. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, thanks. Um, and you know, I know we've talked about it before, but I would love, this wouldn't really be a, quite an update, but I would love to see a little bit more support with the game help. I know some games really have it and then some games just don't really have it at all. So I feel like they gave up on game help. Like what was the I what was was there a big PlayStation exclusive recently that went hard with the game help? Did God recently, of War Ragnarok is a little strong. Maybe yeah, did God of War Ragnarok have it? I never what I was, never used it for God of War Ragnarok. It would have had it, but was it useful, it. I think. Uh, yeah, I guess that's probably the question. Cuz like I've had games where I've been playing recently that I I could use <laughs> like I would have used game help and I look and I'm like, "Oh, you got nothing for me." Thanks. I'm just stuck on this puzzle. Yeah. So more like some type of more um, consistent integration. And again, I don't remember. I'm not always looking for it because often it's not there either. I think well, that's the biggest thing about it, right? Where it was like such a weird, not a weird thing. It's one of those things they announce, they put out these game cards and game help, and you're like, this seems like something you're not going to support well. And then the majority of games don't support it well, so you never look for it. So it's it's, my first instinct is never 
man, I'm trying to get the trophy here. So if I, why not open up game help and see what, I um, mean, you know, you Google it. Even right now, you put in God of War, Ragnarok game help. I'm trying to figure out if I, it had like a good system or not. And it's all just every wiki on the internet right. trying to show you how to get what you want to get. But yeah, we're, we're getting pretty far along and I feel like the updates have been good. Yeah, I'll have to make a, I think a deeper list on what else are we missing. But those are the, f- the first things that come to mind of things that we could use. Now it's time for PlayStation Picks. This is where we talk about the games that have come out this week and the games each of us have picked to play on PlayStation. The drop looks like this. Uh, we got Dead Cells, Return of Castlevania for PS4, Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse for PS5 and PS4, and then Before Your Eyes for PlayStation VR 2. Uh, Janet, what'd you pick to play on PlayStation this week? Um, I have been playing other than Before Your Eyes, which we'll get to spoilers soon. Yeah, don't worry about I'll, uh, yeah. Do you want me to share what I've been playing? I, don't, I can just skip it. I bought Aloy in Fortnite. I will just leave it there. Oh, um, how do you like that? Yeah, it's awesome. Honestly, I felt like some type of way though because I have Fortnite the Crew, which is like the monthly subscription. It's like twelve, thirteen bucks a month. You get like whatever many V bucks and some exclusive skins and the battle pass and blah blah blah. And I bought that, being like, all right, like first, like the, the Dragon Ball stuff hit, and I dropped like. A lot of money and i'm like it's fine you know i'm i'm just gonna do this and then you know let's get on the crew let's not have this problem again we're just gonna be paying it but you know i like bought a f- fucking peely skin so then i didn't have any v bucks left and i don't have enough v bucks for aloy and then I, uh, anyway i spent 20 dollars to get the v bucks necessary and a couple extra to get aloy and honestly no regrets um freaking getting to glide in with the fucking glenhawk are you joking worth every fucking penny man worth Hell every yeah. penny let me tell you about this game called genshin impact that lets you play as aloy if you want to people message me about that too they're like oh yeah. you should like now you just gotta get it. I, I don't play genshin so i i'm i'm not getting aloy there that, but, like, really hey, what's things. your favorite genre of games aloy games <laughs> any game i can play is aloy yeah, I'm all man. Over i'll fucking play almost yeah that's true i'll play almost any game that has aloy in it um and i'll get the platinum except for fortnite because that's way too fucking hard but um yeah fun and exciting stuff over there and of course you can use a uh, epic creator code kind of funny for uh those purchases if you too are buying peely and aloy <laughs> separately <laughs> uh for me i've been playing uh wool long uh which we reviewed over on the kind of funny x cast uh last week would you uh, give it over there i gave it a three out of five uh, but like a very a bit, very good three though oh, like a three that good. i would recommend yeah i, I think wool long fallen dynasty is a, is a good video game um very fun combat but it's it's that thing where everything around the combat everything that like aesthetically the story the like art style fidelity i'm like oh man i wish this gave me a bit more in all the other areas but in terms of the combat and the gameplay i think they 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 really nail it like it's it's you know it's it's um team ninja which does the the neo games if neo is team ninja's take on dark souls style games uh wolong is very much their take on sekiro and i fucking love sekiro and i think they learned a lot of the right lessons i think they could have been uh, stood to like go harder in terms of like there are a couple of bosses halfway through the game that are like oh yeah we really learned from Sekiro here which causes like a crazy difficult spike uh difficulty spike and so i wish they i wish they uh ironed out the difficulty uh a, a, a little bit because it is pretty uneven as you go um either like if you're gonna make bosses hard just make them just make them hard in a consistent way right otherwise like figure out a way to to, to balance that um but yeah, no, I I enjoyed my time with the Wolong a lot. But then also I played Five Dates, which is a game from Wales Interactive. They do a Classic. bunch of FMV games, and I'm slowly making my way through the catalog because I I really dig Wales Interactive. I feel like we talk about Wales Interactive quite a bit on this show in particular, probably more than any other show in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like Five Dates was one that I was going into it expecting, like bad like fun bad tv right whereas oh i'm watching this as like bad junk food because i like i i assume the writing is going to be bad i assume the acting is going to be corny all this stuff i think five dates is legitimately actually good like i i played that game with uh, a friend yami we played it together we like shared screens with each other and made the decisions together in that game you're playing as a main character who picks up this dating app the dating app uh has this system where you are going you are uh going on three dates with somebody right first date is like getting to know them second date is you're playing like a game like truth or dare or something and then the third date uh is like the the like seal the deal type of date right like you're doing like a dinner date or whatever and this game was made during the peak of pandemic so it was made in 2020 and so everybody has to stay at home it's all video dates that are going down that's my question why are you playing it now because i remember playing this when it launched why why did we play it i i think we were just looking for a palette cleanser because we beat escape academy the dlc and oh nice how yeah, was that 
it was fun it was fun okay. i think i like the core content better than what was in the dlc the okay. dlc just has like a lot of more difficult like math puzzles and stuff there where it's like you got to really think about this shit okay um but it was fine it was still fine but yeah we beat that and then we downloaded or we bought i, I, um, I think we brought up the sequel 10 dates or whatever it is like i think that was on an out today and that that led to a rabbit hole of like what the hell yeah is. Cause it was it was yeah it was the thing where I beat the Escape Academy, downloaded, bought. We were here that Janet recommended uh, that I play with Yami, and then we were sitting there like, do we really want to do more puzzles after Escape Academy just beat our ass for the, for the last hour? <laughs> I'm puzzled out. Yeah, and so like I, I I think we just started talking. I was like, yo, there are these games that are these FMV games. I started describing her the Wheels Interactive games, and I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to play Five Dates, and like they just put out this new game, Ten Dates. Yeah um and so i was like yo let's play both of them like let's do it not gotten to 10 dates yet but yeah downloaded five dates give it another it. three years you'll get there <laughs> <laughs> well now that's our next plan like the next All time right. we're hanging out we're playing 10 dates because yeah we played five dates and i like had such a blast like like figuring out how to navigate these <laughs> these dates because they give you five <laughs> different women that you're gonna dates. that five different yeah dates uh that you have the potential potential on going out with um they all have different personalities whatever and it's us like it's us legitimately like being like judging and being like acting like we're dating these people in real life and being like all right she looks kind of mean she has a child what's up with that like like trying to like really like, figure damn out damn bless the truth <laughs> no, we're, out we're going hard well, most of this is yami all right well like hey, man. It's, sure it's, it's us throw harder <laughs> than us. Yeah. The blame. It's, it's us going hard and like you know there we pick oh, i forget her name we pick one girl who's like this the uh, this uh, girl from spain and we start off and both of us are like oh man okay i'm i don't know how i feel about her yet i don't know how i feel about her After, by the second date me and yama are like yo we're wife in this girl like she's the she's the best she's flirty she's like you know she has like secrets that she's keeping that we're trying to figure out and like there's like this level <laughs> this level of like of like spice and intrigue that goes down in five dates that's like very light right like the game isn't content heavy we beat it in like an hour and then i replayed it again with a different group of friends and played it with an hour for them um but it was just a good time like i actually really really enjoyed that game and i was not expecting like i wasn't expecting it to actually be as fun like legitimately fun um uh, uh, as it was so now yeah the plan is that we're gonna play 10 dates as well um when are you playing late shift another game how many years do i have to tell y'all to play a game before you're gonna play it y'all trying to drag me for uncharted 4 i was playing uncharted 4 the whole fucking time i was playing yoshi's woolly world the whole fucking time i play these games they're they're Wait, in did the we rotation. recommend yoshi's woolly world <laughs> no but i just mean like you know are you playing it or not? Like, what's going on? Like, talking about me dragging. Like, y'all just don't get to it. Where, where is late shift? Blessing. The, the so okay. I'll, at late shift. I'm gonna make sure it gets added to the list. Right now, the plan is ten dates. I'm tired of being on the list and being fucking <laughs> second string on your list. Okay. Ten dates. Who it hurts, pressed bless, mute it hurts. on Uncle Marcus? Have you seen the Have you seen the trailer for Who pressed no, mute on Uncle see, Marcus? No, don't, don't bear. Don't fucking pull up the trailer for Uncle Marcus. Bless. <laughs> go play late shift. Late shift. Go is, play late, late shift. shift is coming. Late shift is coming. We just gotta make time. We can't play all these FMV games at once. You got to spread them out it's or else like, I'm going to run out. Uh, look. Wait, Worlds Interactive only has so much time to make so many this games. Is one of the few Do they, they games keep making these? Like, they make them a lot. <laughs> They're the <laughs> super <laughs> massive of this. I'll get the late shift. Okay. Fair enough. There it is. Is this who, who pressed mute on Uncle Marcus? Or is this 10 days? <laughs> yeah. How dare you? Wheels Catch out Wheels Interactive. Interactive. I forget, didn't they tweet you? Didn't you tweet like, yo, cast kind of funny in a Wales Interactive game? And they said, sure. And then we never got cast. Yeah. And yeah. now they got the guy from The Office in here. What the hell? Am I, am I, we're not going to get in there. They got the guy from The Office. Wait, I think that girl was from uh, Five... Isn't she in Five Dates? I think she's in Five Dates. Cinematic Universe. Wales Holy Interactive shit. Cinematic I didn't Universe. Know, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a Cinematic <laughs> Universe here. I wonder if she plays the same character. I digress. That was a good awkward pause. Uh, I, I, you know, the only thing I've really, I mean, I'm still t tinkering with um, Octopath, but I've, I have no new notes on that, and I'm playing on Switch, like I said. Uh, so it's just before your eyes, which means it's a great chance to say, hey, Blessing, GTFO, and me and Janet can talk spoilers for... Uh, uh, yeah, go play Late Shift eyes. while we oh, talk yeah. about before your eyes. I'm going to go GTFO. Bye, Bless. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Barrett, are you, you, you care about spoilers in this game? No, I'm probably never going to play it, but I've also heard Janet talk about it on other content enough to that I I, I know what what it's all about. Sure. What, what happens? Give me what happens, Barrett. It's real sad. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know. It was on like a top ten conversation from like from two, two years, years ago. ago. Like, yeah. Sure. I well, I was just wondering. You say you pieced it together. I wonder if you actually like pieced it together. Or whatever. It's been a long time. I barely remember okay, yesterday. So this is full blown spoilers for before your eyes. This is your chance to get out. Remember, PSL of you XOXO each and every Friday. Yada yada yada. Right in kindoffunny.com slash psioy at free patreon.com slash kindoffunny this is only if you're not sticking around if you're sticking around you'll get a real outro but i just wanted to get through that part to get into it because like so where i paused it is the most like and i shouldn't say pause right where i took my break where i where i turned it off and came back later the next day or whatever is the most like perfect thing because uh janet uh jen had been in the car like all right well you know i'm telling her about it she's like all right well you know uh, is it gonna break you i'm like no because you know i think it's pretty clear what's happening like my mom's pushing me to be a pianist uh i you, you can either like you know be really studious or you could not be and i'm like the girl next door just called me the night before my big exam so i've gone out onto the beach with her i made i made that choice and i'm like so i assume this is where it's going to branch that I'll go back and I'm telling Jen all this. I'll pick the game up. I'll have my, uh, you know, uh, uh, audition for the school and I won't do well because of course I've been out all night with this girl on the beach or whatever. And then, you know, I'll have not the pianist life about it or whatever. And so like that is, I mean, every, if you're here, you should have beaten the game. So like, that is like the, that audition is where the game turns. It just doesn't turn that way. Right. Where, what I thought would happen did happen in quotes where of course, yeah, I went there. I didn't do well in the audition. I didn't become a pianist. I went, but I discovered art, went through the whole thing. Mom gets sick. Mom dies. Okay. And I, I had predicted that to Jen where I was like, this is what I think is going to happen. Cause they're making the mom, the pivotal relationship, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Then I get back to the ferryman. He's like, this is a great story. I get called out for lying. And I'm like, what the fuck? And they bring me back to, Oh no, you never grew up. You were sick in your hospital bed, the, or your your bed, not even the hospital bed, this entire time. So not only is it then grabbing at you know my own personal, this game just is like lined up to destroy me personally. Where it's I'm playing as a kid named Ben, who of course my son is named Ben. Uh, as I, and that's what I discovered even in the first half of the game where I'm playing it and like mom and dad are talking about Ben and I'm like, oh, this is so weird because I'm doing this with Jen talking about her own son, marveling at him doing this or how smart he is. Or did you hear he said that or taking photos of the birthday and yada, yada, yada. And just to super fast interject. Yeah, please. Like the longer time went on, like in our real lives, the more I was like, this is going to destroy Greg. And it's only become more true. Thank God you played it now is what I think. Yeah. I don't know what, what's around that corner, but it <laughs> it's so hits so, on so many things. But anyway, continue. And so then it was like, there. so there's already just in general from the start, this Ben connection, the fact that I'm living the life of the parents right now, the fact that, you know, as I'm sure most people know at this point, I've, I've been gone because Jen's mom passed away. So even when that was where I thought the thing was going, I was like, that's going to be, that's going to hit hard. Then to get back and it's like, no, that didn't happen. Instead, you, who I connect with my son, have uh, have cancer you have some disease right they never go into exactly what it is but i jumped to cancer being the boogeyman that's been in my life forever since you know 2012 like i've always said my greatest fear is my cancer coming back because i'm no longer uh naive about what it takes to fight cancer so to see this kid go through and not be able to beat it and then on top of that have it be that you know it, it's recontextualizing my own life right of like oh no it turns out in 2023 my greatest fear isn't my cancer coming back. My greatest fear is Ben getting sick because I know what it would be like for him to have to do it. And so then to get to the end of this fucking game and the final fucking lines, the dad, why is he smiling like that? The mom, he must be somewhere that he likes. And then they roll credits. Like, come on. I was just fucking destroyed. Destroyed, Janet. Yeah. Yeah, it really gets you. And I think the thing is, too, like, you can, you know, and again, Hopefully you guys beat the game if you're here, but I know some of y'all didn't beat the game and just want to hear it because you're a little weirdos. So welcome in. And then you're gonna be like, you know, <laughs> just I heard my it, name, even though just I didn't say beat my it. Name. You don't have well, to... here's the thing. You said you're not gonna play it, but I know there's gonna be people that are like, after hearing you talk about it, though, I had to go play it. Which I'm not trying to at you at me because you're gonna fucking love this game because this game's dope. Because even with knowing like what happens or like talking about what happens, I think it's so much even sadder than that, which is pretty wild. And I think so much of that is so many of the ways they layer because you mentioned it has that is the twist of the game right you go through your life you're like reliving it and then the guy is like all right you know the birds start 
start sharpen and they're because they're the liar bird which also is such a cool like they do so much cool shit with like death in this game and like they're the way they sort of imagine the afterlife and then even the connection of like the um oh gosh i forget the name of the the egyptian like figure is it and arna it's like the cat one you know like yeah, the, yeah. oh we judge the afterlife you know if you i, I watched the moon night y'all know what i'm trying to talk about they have that in the history class and they like do that through line like you have a cat yourself and like the cat has one ear missing and the cat that's on the boat you know they have so many nice little through lines in the game but i think what's so moving too is like you get that the lies and like the when you relive your life the second time where it's like okay you know tell me the truth now you got to show it to me it's and again such a masterful tie into gameplay where the cat character kind of guiding you to the afterlife is like hey like you've been bullshitting me let me see it. It's not here. No, it's here. You're going to stay here. And it forces you if you like blink too early, as I did many times. They're like, no, no, keep your eyes open, bitch. Like we're about to unpack some fucking shit. Like what really went down in this house in your and then, life? And then when Go he ahead. turns right, when he realizes what's happening, it's like, you don't have to remember anymore. It's OK, Benny. You don't have to do it. It's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, like it's just uh, it's so much stuff. And you get, you get so many other little traumas, too, like not just the childhood illness that like takes your life, but also I, for, and I, you know, it's been two years since I played, so I knew like all the main beats, but I forgot a couple little details. And I'm like, oh yeah, the fucking coyotes kill the cat. And that's yeah. like what, you know, and that's that's one of my fears too. Like my cat's an indoor cat, so it should be fine. And she doesn't, she's kind of scared of going outside, but we have coyotes in our area and I'm always worried that like, oh yeah. And you see, uh, and you see stuff like that on, in my neighborhood all the time, missing whatever yeah. reward. And I'm like, bro, the coyotes ate your fucking cat. Yeah, this like cat this back. is. <laughs> this sucks and it's like and not just the, the coyotes like ate, the, the coyotes ate the little kittens that like your cat gave birth to like when the cat came because the cat comes back you're like oh it's all good didn't get eaten it's like just kidding all those babies are dead it's like holy shit and you know it's all cartoony but it still like it looks like really traumatic to see um and yeah just so many moments like that and i think for me like the pinnacle because i also you know i mentioned this in the main show because we only had like you know so much time going through all this stuff I, I also cried playing this, like, especially too, like, I don't cry a lot on stream because it's like a little weird. So I'm like, eh, whatever. But I'm like, I just started bawling when, um, you know, the, there's like these beautifully done moments where they have like the disease coming at you and it's like a red, like, sh like yeah. thing shooting at you. Like and the a, way like they do, like, you know, you're taking you. the morphine to like shrink it, mm -hmm. but then eventually it no longer works or whatever. Yeah. And like the first the first time that happens, which I also, again, forgot all the details of the game because I know I'm like, OK, I know I have the illness and whatever. The first time it happens, I thought that was going to be like, oh, that's how I die or something. And then I come back and you see other other shit. So the first time it's happening, I'm really trying hard to hold off, you know, not blink because you have the metronome where it's like, OK, yeah. once you once you blink, it's going to jump forward. And I'm seeing death come at me and you're looking death in the face and you hear your parents off to the side. And they're like, oh, is he OK? Call that. What's happening? Call the ambulance. It's like, oh, my God, I'm tearing up just talking about it. It's yeah. so powerful and beautiful and sad and moving. And you just like really feel death wash over you. And it's like, yeah. oh, so fucking good. You know, did you play uh, that dragon cancer? no but i thought about it because i know i know a lot about that game just not like the nuanced beats sure. but it totally reminds me of that you know based on just the bit i know just from like the where it sits in the kind of pantheon of narrative games sad games games about disease and, and death yeah and, and you know you might remember that dragon cancer from years back it was you know the dad made it and it was actually chronicling his own his own child's uh, real life uh cancer yeah. battle and struggle and, and death through all that or whatever and use real clips from him or whatever and yeah, it's totally like that game's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to take a shot at it. I preferred this one being more on the nose with it of putting us there. That dragon cancer was very abstract. And so it yeah. was like interpretations and this, that, the other, this is what it was inspired by. And yada, yada, yada. Like, I really appreciated this one being like, especially as a cancer survivor, especially as, you know, uh, a gamer right I, just, I appreciated being in the boots of this and like you know what i mean and it, especially this one being in the headset of it and uh, you know it's unflinching and you have to go through it and you can you know like you're saying at points where you do blink and it's like no no you have to do this like keep your eyes open we have to remember this moment and figure it out i was like fuck dude like i thought they did such a great job with this game like i'm so impressed yeah um i think too like you see you know speaking of like great games it reminds you of you do see like s not one-to-one -one, because it's not uh what's the word it's not magical realism at all in this but like you see beats you know you're in like the bathtub at one point i was thinking of like what remains of the finch and that scene sure. you can kind of move the boat around and i think the way that it creates home childhood and captures the ephemeral nature of memories speaks to me in the way that like a lot of those games kind of gestured at that again very different device for that storytelling but still something that like 
resonates so powerfully. Um, the other big part for this game for me, like besides the, you know, the, the death kind of coming at you and you're like staring death in the face and it's like, oh my God, like is this the end? Like it's just wild stuff yeah. is when he, you get the typewriter and you start writing your story and you like basically write the story that you just lived. Like the fake story is like a diary story. kind. It's like a mashup thing. Yeah. And your mom reads it. And like she's upset by it and your dad comes in like your mom loved it and it's like she didn't fucking love the story like yep. she's talking about it in the other room i can hear her. and then when she comes in at the end and says you know i read your story oh man it's so tough it's like i really liked it but you know i didn't really like the the guy in it he seemed like kind of a jerk you know he's not like the kid that i i knew you as so like here's who you've been for the last 11 years and it's just so like i think what this game captures so well is the beauty of the love that exists between people and how again it's like so emotional because I, I just played mm -hmm. it too so it's like a lot yeah yeah but like, super fresh for you the way that like how people can see you like in a way that you can never like see yourself kind of thing you know and i 100%. think um i think too like i'm coming off of i finished you because like a dragon that was also very emotional surprisingly even though that game is full of memes but um and i think there's something so like you see that story told across like different genres and mediums in different ways. But I think that they capture it so beautifully in her being like, you know, in so many ways, this is a game also about art and the creative process and making art and the pain yeah. of making art. And for her to like, I wrote you this and like, this is who you are to me. Like, damn. And then, and then, and then you see God and God's a fucking cat. And it's like, ah, oh, this is like so fucking good. You know? Yeah. I mean, you're nailing it. I think of like, there, there are so many moments that hit, cause especially for me talking about, the game in two halves where it wasn't that break point. Like I really didn't like my mom. You know what I mean? I was, yeah. I was more on the dad side of like, why are you pushing him? Like, what is he doing? Why he, I, am I really into this? And like, I crumple up the paper in the car and she got all mad at me or whatever. And like, why are you mm -hmm. doing it? It's like, yeah, clearly I'm not into this mom. Like stop pushing your dreams on me kind of thing. But then yeah, to get, they did a great job of typing the story and then having her reaction to it. And I was like, is she reacting to, cause I, I, you know, you don't really have like a, uh, she's a bitch or whatever, like line you can put <laughs> right. in there. Right. But I did do the, she was pushing me like you know what i mean and like she was Same. really you know, you know, foisting her dreams on me kind of thing and so i was wondering if that's what she was mad about and so when she came back in it did catch me off guard that yeah it was like oh you think your life's been a failure but you know you're you know the best friend of this girl next door and you've brought us so much happiness and stuff and again like that's the it's an interesting commentary on failing to live up to your parents expectations and whatever pressures they're putting on you but what they actually see in you and what they actually have for you and it's again back to you know me right now and it's like i think you know when you're uh childless and maybe even when i where i was before i met jenna like i'm never having a kid or whatever right when you'd hear parents talking about how proud of their kid they are like oh i get i get it but i don't get it of like why are you proud of like a baby what's you know what i mean like what's the what's the, is it's it's living whatever you know what i mean kind of thing like is that it, all babies are hitting these milestones around and what are you talking about blah, blah. to be here with ben you know what i mean who just just turned 17 months old and like the fact that now he nods yes he can say what he wants to a degree right and he says bye when he leaves a room and all these are like these are all like so fucking crazy incremental chip damage that's not damage but chip love or whatever you know what i mean of like seeing him become a person and then to jump to this fucking game and see someone robbed of that and to have uh you know the uh, the, uh, the the i want to say crypt keeper that's not right the ferryman to have the ferryman yeah. talk to god about that and be like this this is a child who was robbed of you know being able to have a life and like you know what it's like oh my god like it's such a beautiful way to talk about what um the death of a child or a death of a young person is right. And then to, you know, go back to the core Greg Miller stories you've heard a million times, right. Of like Tim Grant, who I, uh, you know, documented the Columbia daily tribune, his struggle with cancer and yeah, what that meant for my struggle with cancer and what that means now to be a father and look back at that story and see all that stuff. And then to live it through this game and be able to at the same time, be Ben in the game, but also be a parent in the game as well. is so fucking weird. Like they do such a great job of putting all these threads together and then however you want to interpret them or pull on them or experience them, right? It's so impressive. I think too, like, and not every game or story needs to do this in my opinion, but I think it's such a good example of a well-done tragedy um, in that every good tragedy has catharsis at the end. And I think while the it's so funny, like in a game where you then know what happens, like, oh, you're dead. Like, you're clearly dead. Like, whether you're dead as an yeah. adult or a kid, like, either way, you're dead. That's not going to change. But not just in the the line that you pulled out of why is he smiling? He must be somewhere he likes. Being such a a beautiful like entrance into 
the afterlife but also i think just again that ending piece where that she that the mom reads um about you also oh my god i forgot they um and this is the part where i was like bawling at like when just the way she talked about like this is like what i see you as and like who you are to me and you know I'm crying and I'm hearing the story and I'm like, oh, I don't want to blink because I don't want to miss like what yeah, she yeah, says. Yeah. But when you blink, it goes to the the cat like ferryman yeah. reading the exact same thing. So then as you're blinking, which I'm sure they know, like my friends will be crying at this part because it's emotional. Like you're going back and forth between the two. And I'm like, man, they really snapped in the presentation of this and making it such a unique and fun experience that also allows you to get the story. And again, that's, you know, we, we talked about it a bit in the main show to get people to understand the structure of the game and how the mechanics work. But that's what's so smart. They know when to make you like push forward when you might not want to, and they know when to allow space for direct storytelling while also keeping you engaged and still implementing that mechanic. Like that was such a smart move that they only did in that exact time too. So it felt fresh. Um, and yeah, I think for me, the the real catharsis besides that ending part is just that idea of, you know, whether it's like stuff you impose on yourself, whether it's your parents, whether it's a combination of the two, the idea of you know, you you did live and you had a yeah. life and you have these things to show and like don't let what could have been or or what could have you know been in the future what, what could have been different. Have been, yeah. Exactly. Take away from those experiences and who you were. And I feel like that's such a good reminder just for everyone to have and like something that I don't know, I find myself trying to think of, like living my own life of there's all these things and like all these ways I think about the future and like what I want and what I'm working towards, but I like really try to like enjoy the present and experience that and notice that that this is what i was looking forward to before also and just you know it's such a universal important heartfelt message um so yeah this game fucking rocks yeah 100 percent. yeah and i think it, you know i think for me as a closer right in the spoiler section of it is like even i think you know you know <laughs> i wasn't a teenage lesbian and gone home still worked for me so i think that this would still work for me if i wasn't a dad or whatever yeah. but one you know one of the reasons that it just destroyed me destroyed me i think is something that a lot of people look for from me with god of war where when we did the replay for god of war 2018 there were so many questions of i wonder if greg's gonna get more out of it being a dad and i was like no not really like this isn't my relationship with it whereas you know ragnarok i'm jumping in there's gonna be spoilers right here for god of war ragnarok not colossal but spoilers for like the first 20 minutes and then a com conversation at the end right um uh you know the death of uh fenrir right like in the beginning of that game destroyed me and jen on the couch but that was through the lens of porty like we had just lost porty recently when we were playing that and, and i think you know death and friendship and all this stuff is tied up in that whatever and then obviously the conversation it, it, uh, where i'm driving with this is that you know, how has father had changed me as a gamer the conversation that I always talk about between Kratos and Atreus in the tent got me, I uh, forget if I full on cry. I, I did. I, I full on cry to that section, right? In a, in a very cool, like this is a beautiful scene way. But it was also not even so much about me picturing me and Ben as me picturing my own, me and my own father. And then just in general, all the things that are tied up with having a parent slash being a parent, whatever. Again, the ending of the game. Why is he smiling like that? He must be somewhere he likes. Breaks me every time I talk about it. And I tear up just mentioning it because I imagine Ben smiling. You know what I mean? Like, I can't disassociate those two things for this character of Ben and then what's happening in the thing and yada, yada, yada. And that's what fucks me up so much about that specific line and, like, putting me on the ropes and just destroying me. But I'm glad it did because it's a beautiful, beautiful game that I encourage everybody to play, whether it is on PlayStation VR 2 or Netflix or your webcam or whatever comes next. Now, here is the thing I have. Now, have you done any trophy hunting at all in this game? I started to, but I had to get I got cut off pretty quick okay. because I have life. a question for you that you might not know the answer for that. I'll have to investigate more on and we'll have to, like, ask if we don't have the direct answer. But sure. I started trophy hunting in it because I finished it, had some time. I'm like, oh, it's not got some trophies. Worked on the trophies, got a couple trophies. One of the trophies is to, you know, there's a point where you're like looking at the stars and they're like, oh, complete the constellation. Yeah. But because it's like timed, you know, like you have to yeah. kind of do it quickly without blinking, blah, blah, blah. I did it like two times. Couldn't couldn't do it. Couldn't finish it. Kept messing it up. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just fucking turn off eye tracking because any good trophy hunter knows uh -huh. it's about Cheat. getting it done, not about doing it with pride. You know, yeah. leave that pride shit at the door. OK, I could, there's a lot of shit I can do for pride and none of it's these things. So anyway, I turn off eye tracking and without the eye tracking, you just hit X. So it's like, oh, cool. Great. Glad they also have this in there in case, like, for some reason, people can't use the eye tracking or they don't want to whatever i did it no trophy pop so yeah. i wonder is it locked to you need to have the eye tracking on i don't know for sure because so, i haven't tried it enough and i don't know if it's like a pat you know 
here's what I would here's what but... I would say, and this is completely um untested and it hasn't I, sure. I would have I would if if life had gone normally, I would have the answer for you already, Janet. I was playing this game, like I said, I started doing a bit of trophy hunting and I I found a Steam uh Steam had a tro uh, you know Steam trophy guide up for how to do stuff right. And here's where I thought something might be awry. There's Eyes of Steel, which is you can win any staring contest. Yeah. Which according to the Steam community on the plate or I'm sorry, the PC version was look at a metronome for about 30 seconds, 30 back and forths without blinking and it'll pop. Sometimes it, it might may take a few more than 30. I spent a, a multiple things doing that and it wasn't me blinking i was getting to 60 seconds and it wasn't going because you can pause and you know and take a break if you need to blink and come back or whatever and so i am thinking they might be having trophy problems mm. because when that had happened at the time i was on psn profiles which granted right now just has five game owners so it's not like a, a you know a, a, a very big pool we're pulling from but right now still none of them have the platinum and nobody has the take all the notes in class trophies. And so I feel like it's possible. Some of these are glitched out or there's something going on and I haven't turned on my, I haven't turned the game back on since sure. I was originally doing it. So I don't even know if there's been a patch, which maybe if there has been a patch, maybe that's fixed the eyes of steel one that I was talking about. Cause again, people have, I, obtained I do that. have eyes of steel. For okay. Reference. And it was just and the I 30 second thing, right? I mean, I just did it naturally. So oh, like, okay, okay. I don't even know what had happened. So I don't I know. Yeah, I, I could be speaking totally out of my ass. Maybe right. but I, I for sure sat there looking at it and I was like, well, shit, did I pop it at home and it didn't sink? And I came home and it wasn't popped here. So I was like, I don't and I will know. That I, I do know from also looking at the, the Steam guide because at a certain point, I'm like, where are these fucking notes in class? And uh, which I'm going to go back to that those guides to try to finish it up. Um, but in that, like, I remember they had, you know, and this is not like, the wildest problem like plenty of games have like oh this thing's bugged and now it's fixed yeah uh, for, especially for the trophies so uh again very Wait, they had that in steam and they were saying stuff had bugged in steam yeah like i think one of the trophies had like an issue but i forgot which one it was at, at some point that's since been patched on like some platform you know but whatever yeah. um We'll see. I'll we, more to come on this. We, if stay you care tuned, about ladies it. and gentlemen. We will continue yeah, to chase this. Yeah, coming in hot. I'll let I you know. I assure you but that when we'll I get see. time to sit down and get this platinum, if something's not working, I'm immediately going to uh, the developers and be like, "Hey, what's up with it? Great job on the game. What's going on with this part? Why am I not getting it?" Exactly. Um. So you know, we'll see what's up with that. But yeah, it's been fun. We'll be a good platinum to have in the in the rotation. Not too hard to get. It's like ten trophies. I have like six of them. So. You know, if ladies and gentlemen, you have PlayStation VR 2, we can't recommend this enough. Five out of five before your eyes out on March 10th. Go get it. 15 bucks on PlayStation. I think well worth the money for the experience you're oh, getting. Yeah. But let us know what you think, of course, because this is PS I Love You XOXO. Uh, you can write in and let us know what you think of Before Your Eyes over at kindoffunny.com slash PSILY, along with all your questions for each and every week's show. Remember, we record it on Thursday. If you go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you, of course, can be part of the show uh watch this record it live you can get it ad free you can get a plethora dozens of bonus exclusive episodes no, no that's not of uh, exclusive episodes that are up there they're monthly they're daily they're weekly there's a million different things i started uh, to drift there in my own head because that's what i do because i have to ask you janet garcia live on the air can you do ps i love you xoxo next <laughs> tuesday yeah short answer yes perfect i have it Long on for 3 15 p.m pacific time that would be on patreon.com slash kind of funny we are moving because of an embargo but not our oh wait actually hold on one of our shows might be embargoed let me see when is this no no both both of the embargoes that can be covered on that show will be up at that point but then there's another embargo we have to worry about for a different show but i'm not getting into all of that so next 15 week, yes i can do it i will have to make sure i leave at a certain time because 3 14 Oh, it's three. I'm sorry, oh, sorry. I thought you said three fifteen. We're on talking the 14th, about yes. watching live as we record this March fourteenth, three fifteen p.m. Pacific. And you you got to get out of here. What time? Um, as close to like kind of like semi ace. I have a skate lesson at five. Okay, so I need to be out of here. We'll like, get you off. Remember, blank. Pretty and soon. That. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Well, we'll talk about it. But I, I'll be there for like almost everything. <laughs> Sounds good, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we make content here. Kind of funny because we 
are a small organization independent and need your support patreon.com slash kind of funny if you have no bucks toss our way no big deal you can get each and every episode of ps i love you xoxo over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe next week it'll be up on wednesday like i said you can watch it live ad free and all that stuff on tuesday of course you can get the ad free version anytime on patreon.com slash kind of funny but i digress use the epic creator code kind of funny when you're checking out of the epic game store or buying something on your playstation that in a game that uses the epic game store and you can put in kind of funny uh yeah that's the whole show blessing's not here i like that tie-dye shirt he wears a lot though. i'll tell you what it's nice yeah i like your hat janet kind of funny.com slash store until next Funny. time ladies and gentlemen it's been our pleasure to serve you <laughs>